It's time to put the kids to bed and put the tinfoil hats on. It's the ATS News. Hi, everybody. I'm Johnny Anonymous. If you're ready, let's give you some trustworthy news and information from the number one conspiracy website in the world, AboveTopSecret.com. Well, friends, the holidays are just right around the corner. Do you have any ideas for exchanging gifts? How about getting an unexpected gift in the form of a world treaty to cut down on carbon emissions? The new treaty, now under negotiations, seeks to impose an emissions reduction requirement globally on developed countries by as much as 45 percent below 1990 levels by the year 2017 and by at least 95 percent by the year 2050. This treaty will create an international bureaucracy with the authority to regulate energy use. The entity would in fact be a political institution with the power to govern. In other words, this treaty will create a world government to administer global governance. According to Lord Christopher Monckton, he has read this negotiating text and he says without hesitation that this treaty will create indeed a world government. He goes further, much further, to explain that while this treaty will have no impact on global climate, it will have a great impact on the global economy. The purpose of the treaty is and has been since the very beginning of negotiations in the early 1990s to transfer the wealth from developed nations to the developing nations. So how might the swine flu affect our personal life at home if it reaches a pandemic stage? Well, the U.S. government has issued a new report that recommends blocking access to popular websites during a pandemic outbreak in order to preserve internet bandwidth for investors, day traders, and securities clearinghouse operations. The concern is that a pandemic would cause too many people to stay at home and download YouTube videos and porn, hogging all the internet bandwidth and blocking the throughput for investment activities, thereby causing a stock market meltdown. So, you mean I can't go to AboveTopSecret.com to check on what the latest news is? This is crazy! Okay now, by a show of hands, who here remembers the Jetsons? Anybody? Anybody? Well, you remember how they used to scoot around the air in their little spaceship? Well, if Roger Shar has his way, his new EM drive might allow you to do the same thing. The EM drive is an electromagnetic drive that would generate thrust from a closed system, which is impossible, say some experts. To critics, it's flat-out junk science, not even worth thinking about. But undeterred, Roger continues his work, and now the Chinese have said that they have validated his math and are even building one of their own. The heart of the EM drive is a resonant tapered cavity filled with microwaves. It will be capable of vertical takeoff and hovering silently in place. If successful, it will be adapted as a personal transport. Just think about that. Your very own flying car. You know, this is something aeronautical engineers have dreamt of for decades having a craft like this. The theoretical advantage of the EM drive space plane compared to rockets is that it allows a slow ascent with low acceleration. There is also no telltale rocket exhaust plume. And currently, the launch of ballistic missiles anywhere on Earth can be immediately spotted from space. The EM drive system would be undetectable and could arrive from any direction, leaving the target or country with no way of knowing who it was that shot it off so they would not be able to retaliate against it. Note to ATS bosses, the ATS staff would like to have one of these for Christmas. Well, how bad is the economy actually getting? According to an article in Forbes magazine, Republican Ron Paul states that the large-scale government intervention in the economy is going to end badly. Mr. Paul claims any time the central bank intervenes to pump trillions of dollars into the financial system, a bubble is created that must eventually deflate. 
We have seen the results of Alan Greenspan's excessively low interest rates, the housing bubble, the explosion of subprime loans, and the subsequent collapse of the bubble, which took down numerous financial institutions. Rather than allow the market to correct itself and clear away the worst excesses of the boom period, the Federal Reserve and the U.S. Treasury colluded to put taxpayers on the hooks for trillions of dollars. He continues and concludes with, what is more likely happening is a repeat of the Great Depression. We might have up to a year or so of the economy growing just slightly above stagnation, followed by a drop in growth worse than anything we have seen in the past two years. The Fed has already overseen a 95% loss of the dollar's purchasing power since the year 1913. If we do not stop this spending soon, we risk hyperinflation and seeing a 95% devaluation every year. Note to self, stop spending money. In a recent article by a member here at ATS, who apparently was approached with information that seems to link several doctors that either now or in the past have worked with the World Health Organization with a strain of the swine flu virus. Now, that in itself may not sound all that sinister. But according to the article, it's the wording and the timing of the work that many members find interesting. According to patents that were found, what they found to be curious was U.S. Patent Application 20090010962, entitled Genetically Engineered Swine Influenza Virus and Uses Thereof. It was filed on June 1st, 2005. This, of course, is a few years before any of us in the public knew of or heard of the swine flu. And apparently, doctors were attempting to combine genes from a human flu virus and the H5N1 bird flu virus strain. Also of interest was an interview that was published in The Citizen with Dr. Richard Webby, a virologist at St. Jude's Children's Hospital. In it, he answers questions as to why researchers have been combining bird and human flu viruses in order to create a pandemic strain as to why doctors would do such a process, there was a reminder by several members on this article that in order to create a vaccine against a viral bug, you need to first have a live host virus to work with. According to the BBC, an extract found in the bright yellow curry spice turmeric can kill off cancer cells, scientists have now shown. The chemical Curcumin has also long been thought to have healing powers and it is already being tested as a treatment for arthritis and even dementia. Now, tests by a team at the Cork Cancer Research Center shows it can also destroy gullet cancer cells in the lab. Doctors found that curcumin started to kill cancer cells within 24 hours and the cells themselves began to digest each other after the curcumin triggered lethal cells of death signals in their system. And before we sign off, friends, I would just like to apologize. We made a couple of mistakes by erroneously saying that Chaco Canyon was located in Colorado and not in New Mexico. So our apologies to all the residents of New Mexico for that mistake. And we also put up the wrong link for the Kim Trails article which was by All Seeing Eye, and instead had the German swine flu link. I just want to apologize and let you know that those that made the mistake have been duly warned, and we apologize for any inconvenience this may have created. Well, friends, that's going to do it for everybody here at ATS News. We appreciate you watching this episode and hope that you'll continue doing so. Remember, if it's not on AboveTopSecret.com, then it probably doesn't matter. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Are you serious? You never watched the Jetsons?